this week on NHRA Today. The thrill blast past other masters of the fast. A rising sun racers connection with a muscle car collection. It's a wild time in the Northwest at Woodburn and racing and relaxing with Pro Stocks Vince Corey. From the GM Tech Center in Warren, Michigan, these stories and more on this edition of NHRA Today. One of the most taken for granted parts on a modern pro stock engine is the piece that holds everything together, the block. Teams spend hundreds of thousands of hours on a dyno, testing head and manifold designs that yield minute gains. But a great deal of refinement is also needed on the 200 plus pounds of cast iron at the heart of an engine. That duty falls to the manufacturer, where computers and horse sense combine to create horsepower. Hello everyone and welcome to this edition of NHRA Today. I'm Steve Evans. You know, engine blocks may appear to be the same for some years, but actually they are constantly being improved. And today from Detroit, we will show you how General Motors manufactures a racing engine block. Now the process for aluminum or cast iron is virtually the same, so our block of choice will be the Oldsmobile DRCE, or Drag Racing Competition Engine, used by the vast majority of Oldsmobile and even Pontiac Pro Stock racers. Plus, in the next half hour, we'll follow funny car racer Kenji Okasaki as he tours an American muscle car collection. You'll like that. And we have a profile of Vince Curry, the Pro Stock star. But first, time out for What's Hot. Funny car driver Whit Basemore is back in the driver's seat after the engine fire that ate his fast orange Ford Probe at the Columbus Spring Nationals. He brings his sponsorship to the wheel of Johnny West Dodge Daytona, replacing Wyatt Radke. Another driver getting a new ride last week was Top Fuel's Eddie Hill, who got a quick course in curves before the third round of the Fast Masters. He borrowed some oval expertise from first round winner Ace McCullough. I can see right away this would be habit for me. What if we uh, both get to where we like to turn left? What are we going to do then? In qualifying, Eddie showed he can hold his own around the oval. And in the first heat, he held up a last lap challenge by Lenny Pond to take the checkered flag. His learning curve, he says, is straight up. The final heat found Eddie's Jag in fourth place until Bob Bondurant and Lloyd Ruby sent the second and third cars into the concrete. Eddie finished second to Parnelli Jones, advancing to next month's Fast Master Championships. That's got to be the most intense three-day driving course anybody's ever had. And that's what's hot. No question computers are the engineer's best friend here in this General Motors design house, but they are not a total substitute for going to the battleground, the racetrack. And Larry Cubis, we see you at the racetrack all the time as a General Motors engineer. What do you learn bench racing with the pro stock guys like Warren Johnson? What I learn is what uh, features they're looking at to uh, improve performance and reliability. Okay, let's say you all agree a little change needs to be made. What happens then? Uh, usually I bring back the ideas that they give me here to this design house and then get it on paper and off to the pattern shops for incorporation into the patterns. How often can you uh, recast a block and incorporate the changes? We can do it as much as three or four times a year. So as I said earlier, they are constantly evolving. That's correct. All right, right now let's take a moment to take a trip with Japanese funny car driver Kenji Okasaki to a fabulous muscle car collection. Funny Car sophomore Kenji Yokozaki makes his living in Japan by selling imported American muscle cars. So it's no wonder Milton Robson's incredible collection grabbed Kenji's attention. I like that trans Oh yeah, that's a rare little super duty. That, mm -hmm. That's only a 10,000 regional mile car. That's regional paint, regional tires and all on that car. Wow. That's good. I like that car. Super. That's got all the original exhaust resonators and all of them. Uh -huh. Super Duty 455. All right, Kenji, you know your Mopar is pretty good, but now this is one of uh, seven 71 Hemi Cuda convertibles built. Mm -hmm. And actually one of only two of the four speeds that was built. Uh -huh. yeah. And actually both two, uh, both four speeds were built were this B5 Blue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, same as uh, interior. And we B5 just finished interior. a complete registration on this car last summer. Yeah, it's and beautiful car. As you can see, the interior is all original. That's mm -hmm. not reproduction there. Mm -hmm. All good stuff. Got NOS tires, which we done done that car right. Mm-hmm. 
And of course, if you want to look over the Challenger, at the Challenger. Now, mm -hmm. this is the 1970 Hemi Challenger, actually mm -hmm. one of nine built. Okay. And actually one of the five four-speed cars built. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of long history. If we had time, I'd go go into it how I found it and where and all of that. But I guess push for time. We better not do that. Right now. <laughs> okay. Well, these are my kind of cars. Of course, the other Mopar is our Hemi Superbird. Yeah. That car is a 30,000 original mile car. It's mm -hmm. just been painted, freshened up a little. It's always been done to that one. Yeah, this is my kind of car. I'd, kind like, to, like. I'd like to have this one. Good driver. Yeah. All right, coming over here on the Corvette end now. Of course, this is a new car. Uh-huh, I know uh, that. Callaway, Reese Callaway come out and building, was planning on building 50, but he wound mm -hmm. up with just when the Chevrolet changed the engine on him, actually wound up building 10 of the twin turbo speedsters. And okay. this is one of 10 built. Yeah. Of course, he calls that the Callaway Purple, I think, with pink clay interior. Oh. oh, that's a neat car. I haven't seen it before. Now, this is a 57 Airbox car. Okay. Actually, that's one of 43 Airbox Roadsters built. Mm -hmm. Is it hard to come by? Pretty hard. I hunted one of those for about probably five years, I guess, before I found it. And from one who wheels and deals in such vehicles, Kenji's reaction could probably be predicted. I mean, that's incredible. I mean, <laughs> I wish I could have these cars in my garage, but, I mean, someday, huh? Stay with us, everyone. When we come back, we'll show you how the improved design goes from computer to a full-board competition engine block. You're watching Sky Welcome back, everyone. We are now in a General Motors foundry where the latest version of our racing block will be produced. But there's quite a few steps we have to see before the molten metal can flow. And it all begins in the pattern shop. It begins here because they're making an improvement in the block. In this case, larger lifter bores. A mirror image is made of the pattern concern. And then to that mirror image, the actual modification to the lifter bores is made, which ultimately will be reflected back into the pattern. In that the mold that will actually cast the block would be made entirely of sand, these core boxes are very important. In fact, they create six cores in all. Here you can see what the front and the back of the engine will actually look like. The core boxes then go through a process where they are filled with sand, and when released, they have taken shape. Here you see a crankcase core headed for the coating process that helps prevent iron absorption. A lot of engine blocks that were created right in this foundry saw real racing action last weekend in Oregon. Here's Bob Fry with his report. It was a big turnout in all classes at Woodburn Drag Strip for the Winston Drag Racing Series Division 6 event. One thing became apparent as I looked around. Besides the fact that there were a lot of cars here, a lot of people seemed like they were here on vacation. Now it's the middle of July and I'm out here working. Once, just once, I'd like to go to the drag strip and be able to take the weekend off. Now this is more like it. Finally, I'm at the drag strip. Not a care in the world. At last, I'm on vacation. There's nothing better than taking pictures of the track. Look at some of the great shots I got in the pits. Here's a shot of Rob Youngblood, the 93 TRW champ. And look at this one. Mary Ann Method. She's won two divisional races in a row and was number one qualifier at Woodburn. This is Phil Mandela. He set a national record with his super stalker. And up in the stands, I got some really great shots. Look at this. Division six, top alcohol funny card champ, Bucky Austin. And here's George Johnson. He's won a couple of divisionals, an alcohol dragster. I mean, this is great. At the track, on vacation, and no TV producers to bug me. Hey, Bob, I thought I'd let you know we're number one qualifier in comp, but we almost ran in the sixes. Hey, Rob, don't bother me. You should have caught me last weekend when I'm working. I'm on vacation, son, but I will take your picture. Hey, great. And what's a visit to the track without picking up a couple of souvenirs? Excuse me, sir. Think this tie goes with this shirt? Hey, Bob, that's you. <laughs> Look at this. Even the kids are on vacation. Hey, Bob, take a Hawaii vacation. I think this goes with the shirt. Hey, Bob, wake up. You're going to miss the finals. Oh, thanks, Rich. I must have dozed off. Boy, am I glad I didn't sleep through the finals. The comp final matched Rob Bruins in the far lane. He's on a roll of five straight final round appearances up against Jeff Krug's national record-setting roster. This is one of the tightest battles we've seen in a while, with Bruins getting the win by just five thousandths of a second. Luckily, I did cut a good light, and, and uh, when I looked up, 
he was so far out there, and all you can do is keep pu pushing the button, and it keeps selecting the next gear, and yeah, it was really close. I thought I got him. I asked him. He said, yeah, I think you got me, and it was five thousandths. The Super Gas Final pitted father against son. Todd Horner in the near lane took on his father, Rob Horner, in the vet. And with the blink of a red light, the youngster beat old dad. Anytime we can both get to the final round together, it's, uh, I'm just really excited. I was lucky to get out on top today. And what was the key to your success here today? Uh, it was my lucky t-shirt. Oh, nice shirt. Now here are the rest of the winners from Division 6. For NHRA Today, I'm Bob, having a wonderful time. Wish you were here. Fry. Continuing our manufacturing process, over 6,000 passenger car engine blocks are created here in this foundry every single day. But when it comes to the racing blocks, well, they get some special treatment. Here you see the cores we talked about placed into the core loader in a very specific order. Then the core structure comes along, picks all of that up, and puts it into the mold where the block will be cast. Remember that West Coast top fuel operation back in the 70s called the Ridge Route Terrors? Well, plans are underway for the Bakersfield base team to compete at Sears Point later this year. The dragster, which was built from the ground up by Roger Coburn in his garage over the past few years, made an appearance at the Hot Rod reunion and preseason test session in Bakersfield with James Warren at the wheel. But due to business demands, Warren will not be piloting the car at its national event debut. The new driver will be funny car veteran Jim Murphy, who hasn't raced a car since parking his Holy Smokes entry after the 1991 Winston Final. It's the time we've all been waiting for, the pouring on of hot iron. And joining me is Frank Sauer, the project manager. And Frank, a lot of recycling here in the raw material. Yes, uh, we uh, remelt our uh, imperfect castings and our uh, in-mold uh, iron delivery system. Tell me about this giant oven. Yeah, it's a 90-ton holding furnace. Uh, we hold our iron at 2,700 degrees. Now, over on the passenger car side, a lot of this was automated. The racing parts you're going to pour by hand. Yes, uh, we deliver the uh, iron to the jobbing floor uh, with a hot metal crane, and uh, we pour the iron into a, a pouring ladle. And the guys are obviously very careful. And what are those gas jets, it looks like, coming out of the casting? Uh, those are atmospheric vents. Uh, those are vents where we uh, vent the gas to the atmosphere, uh, preventing the trapped gas from inside the mold, causing holes in our casting. While we pour on the hot iron, Frank Hawley, in this final installment of his two-part Fast Fact, tells us what can happen when sportsman racers pour on the coal. Last week we showed you throttle stops and how they were used to control the performance of the car so the driver wouldn't break out. This week, let's look at another way throttle stops are used. In super category racing, a driver has to race at the starting line and at the finish line. The driver has to get a good light on the starting line, but not run too fast at the finish line and break out. So as the driver nears the finish line, he'll be judging his opponent against the finish line. If he's in front, he may lift a bit early or touch the brake. Well, some drivers realize that if they took a really fast engine and throttle stopped it, they might have an advantage. The driver will set his car to leave the starting line at full power, then slow down immediately as his opponent speeds to the finish line. Sometime later, the throttle stop releases and his car shoots to the finish line at full power. Now, if he's in the faster car, chasing down the slower car, he's gonna have an advantage as he comes to the finish line because he will be able to judge his opponent and the finish line. His opponent, however, will not know when he's coming. This super category race is tough, and the racers need every advantage they can get. I am up here watching, in fact, fascinated by what they call the shakeout process. I can imagine how hot it must have been down around the mold. Now these engines have come out of that mold at 1400 degrees. The blocks are still glowing. And you can see why they call it the shakeout process. It vibrates all of the sand or most of the sand off of the block and it starts to take shape. The final step here at the foundry is called the finishing process. Our V8 racing blocks are still a little too hot for this, but they'll receive the same finishing touches. The core fins will be trimmed off They'll be bead blasted with steel shot to remove any final remnants of sand, and then each will be hand inspected and touched up. All right, our freshly cast 500 cubic inch Oldsmobile blocks have now been turned over to the Uni Boring Center, where they run into one of the darndest machines we have ever seen in all of our years doing this. It's called the Morisiki Horizontal Machine Center, and it is worth every penny of its $500,000 cost. 
in five to six hours with very little attention from one operator using six pallets, it will drill 170 holes. Cylinder bores are made, head decks faced, a line board for crank and camshaft. All the lifter bores are finished. Absolutely everything that's needed is done on this one machine. Well, while the big Mo slaves away, let's go to the big Mac, Dave McClellan, who will tell us about a GM high-tech machinist who's as good at cutting lights as he is cutting metal. 19 times a year from Thursday through Sunday, the NHRA family shares a special bond. Support at the track and at home are vital to the efforts of pro stock driver Vince Gurry. It's very important to have your family interested because without their support, there's no way you could do the sport because of the time it takes and the effort you have to put into it. It actually is hard on your whole family. So without their support, there's no way I could actually run a program like this. You'll find my wife, she takes care of uh, the back half of the car more or less. She tears the tires, the fuel, the batteries, pulls the tin out of the car, uh, the front end off when we come back from a run, and she keeps the car clean. And uh, my sister, she does the center of the car, and I take care of the engine half of the car. But when the decision's made on the clutch, I make the decision and I assemble the clutch back in, then she puts the bell housing and transmission back in the car. They're great. They help work on the car. Vince's got his jobs he does. He takes out the tin and helps me with the tires, and Rocco's got his job. And it's important to them, and it's important to me that we stay as a family. He leaves us all the dirty work, <laughs> but we don't mind. It keeps us busy. The Corey's home in the Detroit suburb of Mount Clemens serves as the perfect counterbalance to the weekend battles with folks like Warren Johnson. With wife Teresa, Vince Jr., and Rocco, Vince Corey Sr. takes time to enjoy life's finer things. Two years after I met her here, we got married. We weren't going to have children at first. Uh, we raced the cars and everything. Then we decided that it was time to have children. And we had our, our oldest boy, Vincey, Vince Jr., and which he's been racing since he's been three months old. Then we had Rocco, which his name is really Ryan, but we nicknamed him Rocco because he's a little bruiser. But I'm just, I feel better that my family is involved and at the racetrack. During the off season, Corey works for General Motors as a metal mold maker. He's given time off to race as long as the car he drives is a GM product. I have to believe that that's a big part of them letting me go racing because I, I uh, run a professional program. It is a General Motors product, so I, I don't think if I ran a Ford or a Chrysler that they'd really give me the time I needed to go racing. All right, you guys, you, you tape more and beat me in my car, but I want to know if you think you can beat this boat. To escape the world of the asphalt quarter miles, Corey takes to Michigan's Lake St. Clair to relax. Living in the Motor City, what better way to cruise for burgers with some friends than in this hot 69 Camaro? At the track, on the water, or on the beach at Lake St. Clair, Vince Corey's feet are firmly on the ground. And rest assured, the Michigan Pro Stock campaigner won't give up his dream anytime soon. When the Morisiki is done, a block will be ready to be shipped to a Pro Stock racer. Well, like Vince Curry. Matter of fact, we're going to ship out too. I'm Steve Evans, and for all of us here at NHRA Today, we'll see you then here on TNN. NHRA Today is a presentation of Diamond P Sports.